We are going to be uh, using a couple of subqueries in our select statements. And when we do that, uh, the results become a new column. Uh, you can use them in select, join, and from clauses, not just the where clauses that we've been looking at so far. So uh, our scenario here is, our boss would like us to retrieve the most recent invoice for each vendor. And we don't really want uh, to duplicate the vendors. So I've already entered task three. And if we want the most recent invoice, we're gonna be using uh, the max of invoice date. And to do that, we are going to have to enter a subquery. So we are going to be looking at vendor name, which is coming from vendors. And then for our second column, it's going to be the results of a subquery. So we're going to be using AP here. And sometimes with the subqueries, it's easier if we just do like the main part of the query first and run that. And that just gives us vendors, but what they wanted was the most recent invoice. So this is the more difficult part. So our second column, is going to be the result of a select where we are retrieving the most recent invoice date from invoices. Where, and this is where we're going to be connecting the vendors to the invoice, where the invoice table vendor ID is equal to the vendor table vendor ID. And we'll give this little alias of most recent invoice. Now, this is multiple words with spaces, so you can either put it in brackets or single quotes. It's helpful if you spell it right. And if we execute that, okay, so you'll see that some of them uh, apparently don't have a, a most recent date. Uh, and what we're going to do is sort this because uh, we don't really want all of these nulls displaying. So we're going to do an order by here. And most recent invoice. And then let's do this in descending order so that uh, the more current ones are at the top. Oh, that looks much better. Now for our next Scenario, the boss wants to know the quantity ordered for each product. So we need the quantity. Uh, and we're going to want to display that next to the product name. So we're going to be using the Northwind database for this one. And before I go any further, I'm going to move my closing comment down. All right, so we're going to select the product name. And if you remember in the last query, uh, we did an alias for the subquery. And what we're going to do this time, uh, instead of using the as clause, 
we're just going to do an assignment statement. So we're going to create a units ordered column. And we're going to set that equal to the result of our subquery, which we will end up putting in parentheses. Okay. And product name is coming from products. All right. So now for the tricky part, the subquery. Uh, what we want is to total up the quantity that was ordered. So in Northwind, if we take a look, we're using products, right? to get the product name. And the quantity is in order details. So we're gonna have to do the subquery on order details. And we can only do that if the tables are related. So if we look here, uh, we have product ID in products and we also have it in order details. So that will allow us to actually do the subquery that we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a select. And what we want is order details, which is the name of the table. And anytime a table has a space in the name, you have to put it in brackets. And then we want quantity. All right, so we're only retrieving quantity and we're going to total it up. And this is coming from order details. Now we need to connect the quantity that it's totaling to a particular product and that's where the where statement comes in so the column that we're going to connect on is product id so we have to say order details dot product id equals products dot product id Okay, so that's going to ensure that the quantity is only for that particular product. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and execute this. And here it's retrieving product name from products, and we're getting the total units ordered, which is from a completely different table.